All right, guys, and uh, welcome back. In this section of DeFi 201, we are going to talk about how to use flash loans. We will talk about what flash loans are, and we will explain you all the different concepts and all the different tools that you need to actually operate your own flash loan by yourself. In this uh, yeah, in this section, we will uh, explore more in depth what a flash loan is, the workings and the computer science and the economics behind it. We will program a basic flash loan ourselves. We will program a arbitrage flash loan, and we will create our own arbitrage opportunity on our own uh, cloned versions of Uniswap. And with that own arbitrage opportunity we will create, we will also create our own flash loan to actually exploit that arbitrage opportunity that we created. All right, so what is a flash loan? A flash loan is basically a atomic, uh, atomic uh, loan that is automatically re repaid, right? So what can you do with that? Well, you take a, uh, uh, at the beginning of a Ethereum block, uh, Ethereum works as follows. Ethereum has 10 second block time. In those 10 seconds, we basically can freeze time and space. And in those 10 seconds, when we borrow at the beginning of the block time, we borrow a amount, a certain amount of value. We can borrow like, let's say a million or 10 million, no matter how, how big, but it determines how big the pool is that we can borrow from. Then we can do actions. And at the end of those cycle of actions, we have to repay the flash loan. This is an, uh, an atomic concept. So it means it either all happens or it either all doesn't happen. So at the end of the flash, if you don't repay it, all the transactions that you did are basically reversed and never happened. If you actually repay it at the end of your flash loan, it actually gets executed. So uh, that it means that a transaction is, can some can basically uh, uh, you you can you can do an atomic flash loan uh, in one uh, transaction, and if you uh, uh, if you do that, you can have a uh, uh, you can have a chain of events. If that chain of events results in repayment of loan, then that chain of events is true and happens. If that chain of events results in a not repayment or, or partially repayment of loan, nothing happens. This is important to understand. So flash loans took two years to fully be implemented into the Ethereum blockchain. Flash loans are a uh, concept uh, uh, that are already possible on the Ethereum blockchain since almost since his inception of the Ethereum chain. But two years ago, there was a researcher that actually came up with this, with this concept. And now it's, it's implemented in Aave, in DYDX, and I believe also soon in other protocols. So, Flash loans uh, uh, makes the the the, the cap makes capital a true commodity. Uh, this this the, the 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 flash loans are right now. You you have a fee percentage on Aave. You pay zero point zero percent fee to actually operate a flash loan with the lending pools that they have available on their system. You pay zero point zero nine percent fee. If you do a flash loan on DYDX, which is also a flash loan pool provider, you pay 0% fee. In an article that I have linked below, you can find in-depth information about the fee calculations that are needed to actually operate a, uh, a flash loan. It's important that you uh, 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 understand this, uh, uh, this concept and understand the fee concept behind flash loans. You can generally see that DYDX flash loans are more used than Aave flash loans. And there are certain benefits and disbenefits from using Aave or DYDX. All right, so flash loans were originally marketed on the premises that they primarily be used for arbitrage. And if we look at the data as of today, we can actually go to uh, the Aave uh, uh, statistic portal where you can see that arbitrage is the main use case as of today. But it's not the only use case. We can also see flash loans being used for collateral swap in an application called DeFi savers. And we can see uh, flash loans being used for liquidation processes, right? 
What is really interesting, and basically when you use a flash loan for a collateral swap, it's basically an atomic zero capital refinance transaction, meaning that we can do a refinance of a loan on the blockchain with zero back capital. And this comes down to if you have, for example, you have a, uh, you have a loan, you have a CDP on uh, Maker. Huh? We discussed what Maker is in our previous sections. If you have a CDP on Maker and you want to uh, refinance that CDP, you can do that with a flash loan. So you inject $100 worth of, da of ETH into a CDP, you get around, and let's say you get $60 worth of DAI out of the CDP. If you then want to refinance your CDP to be backed by BAT token, basic attention tokens, instead of Ethereum tokens, you can do that with a flash loan. And we will see that uh, in a later uh, example. All right, so flash loans are unfortunately not only used uh, well, fortunately or unfortunately, not only used for arbitrage opportunities, they are also used uh, by, by hackers to break systems. And this is, a, uh, uh, this is the recent actions that happened on the BZX chain are one of the main reasons that flash loans got so popular. Because what happened basically that a uh, hacker, an anonymous hacker, stole around uh, uh, we will go more in depth into the, the hacks and what happened. Uh, stole around a uh, million dollars from BZX with two hacks. You uh, can see basically what happened here. And the concept uh, is actually fairly simple. So a hacker came in, they were using flash loans. They came in with zero collateral and they left with around a million dollars. So that's uh, quite interesting. Uh, let's break down to get a better understanding of what flash loans are. Let's let's break down the uh, the, the 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 concepts of uh, uh, of the BZX hacks. Uh, you can see here the two hacks that happened on BZX, and you can see there was a, was a pump and arbitrage attack where the hacker stole three hundred fifty thousand dollars, and there was an oracle manipulation attack where the hacker stole six hundred fifty. Thousand uh, uh, dollars. So let's uh, let's look at this illustration. It really explains in a in a in a nice consistent way what happened during these uh, attacks. The hacker came in and they operated a flash loan where they borrowed ten thousand uh, ETH. With that ten thousand ETH, they then split up the 10,000 ETH in that transaction. So everything you see here in this illustration all happens within one block. So all the transaction flow that you see here, they all needed to happen within one transaction in order to make the flash loan work. They did was they bought 10,000 ETH, they sent 5,000 ETH to uh, uh, Uniswap and they sent uh, 5,000 ETH to Fulcrum to the, the BZX exchange that basically had some issues with it. Why? And that resulted in the hacker stealing money. On the Uniswap exchange, the hacker transferred that 5,000 ETH to Bitcoin. And then uh, by doing this, uh, they also put 5,000 ETH on BZX. And at the moment when they deposited uh, 5,000 ETH on Uniswap and they deposited uh, 5,000 ETH on, uh, uh, on BZX. At the same time, they were converted into Bitcoin. Then on, uh, uh, on Fulcrum, on BZX, the person actually got a... Uh, a, 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 a a, a long position, so they, they actually use the Fulcrum protocol to take a long or short position. And then on the Uniswap protocol, they manipulated the Uniswap price uh, attack and they pumped up the wrapped BTC price, right? So what the mistake here is, 
that BZX did was that they were using the price oracles from Uniswap. And this is, of course, yeah, a bit of a noob and bit of a yeah, bit of a mistake that uh, that uh, BZX uh, has made because you shouldn't use price oracles from Uniswap. You should use price oracles from from Coinbase or price oracles from Chainlink or other providers. But I think they were a little bit uh, quick and dirty, and they programmed it with the Uniswap price oracles because that's actually the most easiest way to do it. But it's not the most secure way, obviously, as we saw here in this hack, in this first hack, where the hacker stole three hundred fifty thousand dollars. In the second hack, the hacker was able to get away with six hundred fifty thousand dollars, and uh, they did a very similar attack. So the, the interesting thing is here is that in both hacks, the hackers were using the Fulcrum protocol. The first hack happened some time ago, uh, I think like one and a half months ago, and then uh, Fulcrum uh, fixed the hacks. They didn't fix it correctly. And then the next time when they went live again, they got attacked once again, and the hackers stole uh, funds from them once more. The first hack, it was a pump, an arbitrage attack, but they pumped the price. And in the second one, they actually manipulated the Uniswap Oracle and uh, uh, abused the, the, Fulcrum, uh, 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 the Fulcrum protocol to steal the different funds. In the articles below are, 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 are uh, uh, explanations more in depth of exactly the sequence that have happened. Okay, so if we want to go even deeper into the chain of events of what happened during the BZX hacks. There is a uh, in-depth article from Hackers Distributed that explains step by step, also from a computer science standpoint, all the steps that hackers took to actually perform this flash loan and also recommendations to Fulcrum what they could have done better in the future to prevent these kind of hacks in the future to occur again. So yeah, so let's let's now think about should flash loans be considered harmful or good for the ecosystem? Well, I think flash loans in general are good for the decentralized financial ecosystem. As discussed before, DeFi is a anti-fragile system. So once attack like this happened, uh, in the future, people actually will not make that same bit of rookie mistake by using wrong oracles or uh, 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 by having a, a mistake in their protocol so that the bomb and dump or oracle attacks can happen. So in my opinion, yeah, flash loans are not harmful, but actually uh, provide uh, extra liquidity and uh, provide extra use cases to the, to the decentralized financial ecosystem. All right, so in our next slides, we're gonna dive deeper into the uh, computer science perspective behind flash loans and how flash loans are constructed. See you in the next video.